We are online. Hi guys, we are online. Uh, we have link building webinar today, and our our speaker is from Philippines, uh, uh, Vincito Tapon Jr. He's on the screen. Vincito, can you do something like that? Something like that? Vinci yes, yes, great. Okay, is is our he's our speaker today. We also have guests today. So um. So, guests, please don't be upset. I always use uh, what uh, Google tells me to do, kind, kind of religiously. Oh, well, it's, it is cheat. And I do it from left to right. We just have a new guest. Okay, and I start from left to right as I, as I promise. So, we have actually uh, uh, such, such Deva. Is, is it, um, am, am I pronouncing this correctly? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, that's yeah, actually. Okay. actually. Yeah, uh, he is content maker mainly, and he's from Australia. Uh, so we have uh, Cardi Hill from Page One Power, as lead building company from the United States. Uh, we have Craig Campbell. Uh, he's a SEO specialist, a SEO consultant. He's from Scotland, United Kingdom. We have Stephen Van Fessum uh, from Holland. He's a SEO specialist. Well, we have one uh, no, one more guest, uh, which is Tim Carper. But uh, well, hopefully he will be will be more available for talk. And we do have our our speaker uh, today. Our speaker from Philippines. Uh, Vincito Tampon Jr. Okay, guys, as I, I said, oh, okay, we have Tim, Tim I'll, I'll introduce Tim. Okay, Tim just finished his call, Tim is available, Tim is from England, United Kingdom, he's SEO specialist, he's our regular, uh, uh, okay, no, no problem, Tim. Okay, guys, so if you can, if you can, a little bit, uh, we will wait for people who are, who are uh, late, but we know that people are uh, late usually and we will be uh, we'll be good. Yeah, I can see we have more viewers already. So, okay, let's 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 start. Uh, it's the easiest things for me to start is with Tim because we've done so many things with this team. Tim, how how you been doing? How you been doing this week? Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. All fine. Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, guys, don't mute your microphone because idea of this five seven minutes we are we are waiting because I can see more people on time. People are late. People are usually late. We don't want to provoke them when we start already. So everybody who's just joined us, we haven't started yet, but we do have we do have our speaker today, uh, which is Richard Tampon Junior from Philippines, and we have plenty of uh, guests. Um, okay, guests are, are kind of uh, shy. Okay, uh, page one, uh, power. Is is this a link, link building company? Is what you do mostly link building coding? Yeah, we we specialize in link building and, and you know and the the other things that go into organic search traffic. But kind of link building is our bread and butter and our core and and you know anything related to that we also dabble in. But it's mostly link building. Okay, so we have two link building companies uh, today because uh, Vincita uh, represents, uh, he is a, a CEO, uh, CEO from a, a link building company as well. Okay, um, Steven, Steven uh, what, what do you do? What do you do? What, what's your company? Um, I'm the uh, chief customer officer at um, Content King. Content King is a content monitoring and optimization suite, um, basically keeping track of your website, uh, tracking all the changes, making sure uh, you've got in-depth knowledge in um, how your uh, website and content is performing. Um, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, I'm basically working on everything that's customer related. Um, so uh, marketing, sales, and support, basically. Uh, okay, uh, Craig. Craig, what about you? Um, I'm uh, doing SEO. I've done it for, for a number of years, and uh, you know, I do pretty much the full works. You know, I deal with clients, you know, adding content, link building, and, and all that kind of stuff. And as most of the chaps will know, link building for me is as important as any other part of SEO. Um, so you've obviously got to add your content and whatnot, but you're not going to get very far uh, with no decent links. And, and obviously, people are wanting more, more relevant links, stuff like that. And people come up with different strategies to link build. So 
so it's always learning all the time and, and, and learning from others uh, and what others are doing. Uh, with regards to LinkedIn, it's always, always a good thing. So, yeah, I do, I do that. Basically, for a living, I do pretty much. Well, I'm hands on for the next few days. I do pretty much. Akshay, are you with us? Your camera is off. Uh, I, yes, I am. Can, can you guys see, see me now? No, we cannot. Well, yeah. Yeah. Tell us a, a couple of couple of words about uh, both yourself, both your company, and we will go to the presentation. Sure. Um, so I run a content development company um, that's basically specializing in creating content. Um, that includes blog posts, it includes infographics, um, animated videos, um, and other forms of content. So, so yeah, I basically specialize in, in content creation. Uh, okay. Okay, guys, I guess we waited enough. Uh, uh, Vinchita, uh, it's, it's all yours. You can, you can go with, on with your presentation. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Go on. See my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Yeah, okay. So, good morning, everyone. So, we'll be talking about uh, scalable link building today. So, any one of you had um, difficult experience with uh, building links or <laughs> creating content and then promoting it. So, uh, we'll tackle about uh, how you can actually uh, make it scalable with tools, processes, and uh, things that can help you to actually uh, increase your organic traffic, build that authority, and then um, uh, get some uh, customers to that. So, let me walk you through some of the... Okay, so if you want to download this slide presentation, you can actually go to link.me slash uh, scalable that uh, slash link slash building. So um, you don't need to take down notes. You just download the slide presentation. So yeah, let's talk about the top three search ranking factors. So if you add the reference at um, search engine line, you'll look at the top three ranking content and links. So you don't need to uh, say that uh, link building is not dead or link building is not important. But yeah, um, the links are still important these days. So it helps um, websites to rank highest in industries. But it doesn't mean that uh, all of you need this link. You need actually have the foundation with um, your own page stuff and as well as the technical side. So in order for you, for your links to be um, to help your organic search traffic. So, um, knowing that, um, scaling with building is, is quite a difficult thing these days. So, white, ha uh, black hat, gray hat, those types of things still work. But if you can do the white hat thing, then that's much better. So, basically, with scaling link building, scalable link building, what you need is three, three things. Number one is tactics, processes. Number three, uh, the last will be the tools. So both of these can actually help you plan, strategize what campaigns, what um, what specific um, things you need to do or to take an action regards to your website um, and with regards to your industry. So with regards to tactics, there are many uh, scalable link building practice out there, but there are only a few that still works up until this date. So I'll um, categorize it into three. We have text-based. So text-based is more on the content um, side. So one example of this is guest blogging. Um, another example is becoming a regular content contributor to other uh, to other blogs. Second is the visual. One most popular is infographics, and uh, those are uh, also interactive gui uh, interactive guides with. with uh, with heavy visual content. Um, third is the list type of tactics. So it would be around, be around um, directories, citations, and it's more on the resource pages. 
So basically, tactics will just revolve around the three. So you have text-based, visual, uh, content, and last is list or resources pages. Okay, let's first go with the text. Okay, these are just a few, few examples, guest blogging, um, content contribution um, on other blogs, visual assets, infographics, and then uh, list pages, resource pages, then directory uh, submission sites, um, only the top. Okay, so basically that's what you need. You have the tactics, you need to have the processes and tools as well. Okay, now with processes, uh, basically this is the normal uh, sequence or the arrangement of any uh, link building process. So we have, we have link prospecting, this is where you actually look for domains, blogs that are relevant to your industry, and then you qualify them based on their authority. Later on, I'll be discussing more into that. And then um, there, are, there are tactics that require content, but it's not actually um, required for all of the tactics. So you can actually build things even with no content at all. So, uh, but you need to do an average, which is the last phase, and then that's where you get most of the links. Okay, link prospecting, qualification, content outreach. That's basically the, the normal uh, arrangement or sequence of every uh, link building process. Okay, so now uh, let's first go to uh, what are the tools that you you can uh, that can actually help you in automating the link prospecting uh, process. So um, what we recently just used is Citation Labs Link Prospector. So it's not a free, free tool, it's a paid tool. And it helps you automate link prospecting uh, phase. Uh, specific, specifically for uh, tactics that still effective up to this date. So if you're looking for guest blog prospects in different industries, if you look at the, the, the image, you have the industries on online business, skincare, dental, online shopping, motivation. So it can actually help you semi, uh, actually semi automate the process of finding links. Okay, and then now um, in most SEO agencies, digital agencies that don't have the budget with uh, for paid tools, what you can do is a manual search using uh, search engines, Google, Yahoo, and Wien, and plus using spreadsheet. Now the thing with manual spreadsheet um, is that you need to be organized with everything. You need to document almost every uh, aspect of your link prospecting uh, process so you would be able to have an insights into that. So basically with our spreadsheets, what we normally do is we have columns for the domains, um, the metrics, either it's, uh, PR is not uh, working, uh, uh, PR is outdated and it shouldn't be uh, in any um, link prospecting uh, or link building uh, arena. So we have metrics for DA, CF, um, citation flow, um, trust flow, and we also have um, columns for the person who prospected that particular domain and also the categories as also the front page, things like that. So yeah, um, then the name of the uh, contact emails and contact names. Now, um, next would be the uh, some of the tips. So you already have the tools, the citation logs, and also uh, with manual search, uh, you have the, uh, search engines and spreadsheet for you to help organize everything. So let's look at the tips, some of the tips that we, you can actually implement today. Now, what we normally do when we find guest blogs is we don't just use advanced search operators plus keywords. What we normally do is some kind of the on top um, tactics, specifically on using reverse image search to find existing interviews of niche influencers. Because most of the results that you'll get from this approach are mostly blogs. Blogs that um, conducted interviews of top influencers, whether it's from an industry, of um, fashion, shopping, can actually get results using this approach. Next is actually when you do resource page link building, um, broken link building in general, if you want to find the, the 404, the broken links, what you can do is you actually look, uh, visit this link. It is actually a spreadsheet, um, a tool from my friend. So it helps us scale 
finding um, broken links. The uh, the old version of check my Chrome's um, uh, check my links Chrome extension is not really that good, uh, as well as to, for some new uh, Chrome extensions. That's the where main purpose is more on finding broken links. So what you can do to actually scale that uh, finding broken links or knowing HTTP codes of external links on, on a specific resource page is to actually just use this tool. Okay. Now, next is what we normally do if our link build a link prospecting phase is to have a report for team research. So this helps us uh, see what type of search operator, what specific term, and basically what specific Google query can really provide us results in terms of qualified prospects. So we have columns for search operator, we have columns for search term, Google query, as well as the time we started in prospecting for that particular Google query, and then the time finish, and also the number of prospects got from the that specific query. So uh, this is a very basic uh, uh, spreadsheet technique, but it really helps us in organizing prospecting phrases. Since most of the time, you'll have uh, you'll get multiple multiple usage of one link prospecting phrase. This means that um, for one specific blogger, it can also uh, he he or she can use a specific query that can also be used again by another link builder. And it's and it's really a time um, uh, time wasting part for a team. So basically, team research reports can actually help you to avoid those. Um, times wasted uh, using multiple uh, search queries. So yeah, so th that's more on the link prospecting side. So let's go to the next uh, process, which is actually qualification. When you qualify blogs through domains and link building, what you basically look at is the relevance, authority, and obtainability, uh, no more, no less. So you want to find blogs that have, uh, you have actually two types of relevance. We have the domain relevance, which means that um, the, the the overall domain uh, topic um, authority should be as relevant to the specific client of yours. So let's uh, let's say you, that you are working for a, a, a um, skincare uh, client, skincare clinic. So what you need to look for in terms of domain relevance is specifically targeted for skincare blogs. Okay, um, but basically if you're going to page relevance. You can actually get a link from a um, uh, health blog, even though it's not specifically targeted to that skincare niche. So it's basically, it's what um, relevance is more on to domain and page. So uh, basically, what we do is look at the demos, which is a, a top um, directory site for us to help um, look at different niches, whether it's horizontal or vertical, so that we may, may be able to find uh, industries that we can top for a specific client. So this is very helpful, especially if you don't know the industry that you're working on. Yes, you can have a research, uh, do um, uh, link, uh, uh, have some keywords in place, but if you actually don't know the industry, Demos can actually help you find relevant niches for your client or website. Okay, now we'll go for the authority. Basically, what we in, in every link building campaign, what you need to know is what specific metrics are you going to use. Whether it's the domain authority, Azure from Transflows, State Azure Flow, and even SEM Rush. So basically, you need to uh, agree with your client if you are an SEO agency, what specific metrics you're going to uh, use. Um, and if not, uh, for us, we highly recommend DA, uh, TF and CF as well as SM Rush. SM Rush, uh, at most, it's because we want to look at the estimated organic search traffic. It's a daily, monthly, or the all time traffic of specific blog. This also helps us analyze or determine if there is a possible penalty. Of, for that specific blog or site. So when you see that there is a drop down or a decrease in um, organic search traffic and that's uh, a possible indication of a penalty, let's say a content or a, a link issue. So yeah, basically the authorities will 
uh, knowing what metrics can actually help you find uh, the authority a number of that specific website. Okay. Now, in terms of in terms of tools, what you can do to to actually scale um, finding these metrics is to use URL profiler. So it actually can help you find Ahrefs, um, CFTF, as well as social shares, as well as uh, other metrics that you want to look for. So, yeah, uh, simply you just need to upload a specific file. It's a notepad, and then URL uh, URL profiler will run it for you. So you will get a CSV or a spreadsheet file of all the domains with their corresponding metrics. So it actually sem it can it can actually automate the find uh, uh, looking up for metrics of uh, let's say hundreds or thousands of domains that you're uh, that you're trying to uh, gain links from. So yeah, we also have EHS block checker. So if you don't have a uh, URL profiler and just want to look for Ahrefs rank, you can actually use the this feature from Ahrefs. So it can actually help you find uh, domains, uh, link backlinks of, of different, uh, let's say, uh, 20s or 40 or even 50s of uh, domains. So it can actually help you uh, find the metrics for those. OK, now, uh, I talk about relevance, I talk about authority, and I talk about obtainability. Now, when looking at websites or domains, what you need to look at is um, do you have a relationship built with that specific blogger or webmaster? And in that case, when you know the relationship status, your relationship status with that specific owner, then you can actually increase the chances of obtaining a link from that. Okay. Also, you can look at the specific audience. Let's say for this specific sample, blog chicks, just talk about uh, it is, is about uh, is targeting audience in uh, Australia, specific to Australian women. So basically, you can already know if you can actually obtain a link from that blog if you know the, the, their audience, their mac, their readers, and their visitors. So what specific audience are they targeting to, and Knowing that, having that mindset can actually help you uh, see if you can actually obtain a link from a specific blog or website. Also, the topic that in research pages of broken link, this is very important. Uh, knowing the specific uh, purpose or context, or context of a specific uh, of, of a particular resource page. Let's say for this specific um, resource pages, you can uh, this just talk about RV. So it's more on home uh, or. Um, um, uh, moving parts, moving equipments. So if you don't have any, you don't have a content related to this, then you can you can get a link from that specific page. So that's simply that uh, what topic that is all about. So looking at the the context and purpose of a specific page and knowing if you can actually obtain from that page. Another is looking at uh, commercial intent. Let's say for the specific resource page, all of these external links. Are pointing to that gov uh, websites. So if you have a uh, commercial blog, or if you have uh, a, a guide or a content about um, information on, let's say, sun, sun safety for parents, then you can't get a link from this, since most of the external links are just pointing to that gov or non-commercial sites. So yeah, this is one way for you to um, check if you can actually obtain a link. Okay, now, my advice for you is don't rely on tools. Basically, you need to have someone in your link building team to check the obtainability factor of each specific page. Now, it, it, can, it can actually take time doing that, but it can help you in the long run since you'll be already, you, you already know if you can actually get a link from a specific page or website simply in that link, link qualification or link perspective phase. Okay, so let's first let's move on to content creation. Okay, so basically you have two options when creating content specifically for link building campaigns. You have in-house writer when you can just hire someone full time and then write all the articles for your specific client or set of clients. Now the the disadvantage with this is that uh, most of the time most of the in-house writers, especially if they came from different industries, is they don't have 
uh, expertise, core expertise with regards to the information of a specific industry. So if you get, if you, if you just get a generic industry uh, in-house writer, then he or she can write as in depth as possible. But if you can hire someone in the blogging space, spe specifically for a uh, certain industry, let's say for SEO or fashion blog, what you can get is a top-notch content from them. So basically what you can do is reach out to those industry bloggers and just send them an email and then ask if they do free writing. Most of the time, we will actually, they will just say yes um, if they do. So that's a big um, uh, advantage if you are trying to scale uh, content creation since you'll be able to get uh, quality content specifically from industry bloggers who actually who actually have the, that knowledge on different topics. So you have two options here. So you have you, know, you can hire someone to become part of your team and then write it general generic topics or any topics of yours and you can simply look at specific industry and uh, find any bloggers who, who are available to do freelance writing. Okay. The advantage of this, the second option, is that you don't need to create a process or tutorials for that specific writer. He or she already knows how to find um, topics that works for that industry, that works for a client, and also what, yeah, what, what topics are industry, uh, what topics that will uh, cater to the interests of your audience. So this is that. Uh, uh, that's the that's the advantage when you. Just hire industry experts with bloggers. Okay, so yeah, let's we go to the content creation tips. We have guest to graphics. So basically, it's just a topic, a strategy with Brian. So you basically just look, uh, create an infographic, and then when you reach out to a blogger webmaster, you actually just pitch, uh, write a mini guest post on top of the infographic. So basically, you take away the burden from that blogger. Of, of writing the introduction for your infographic. So it can actually help you increase your conversion and response rates. So by using this strategy, we actually gain the A8 plus and the A4 plus links. So it still works. Another thing you can actually use as your guest and guest content for other blogs. So basically, you'll just reach out for a industry influencer or expert ask him questions, and then when, when he send to you uh, his answers, then compile it into one post and then use that as your guest post for another blog. So this is a win-win situation. Win, uh, win factor for that specific influencer that you've interviewed, since you he or she can get more exposure, a win situation on your part, since you'll also get a link without any effort and uh, Content creation. Now, next is one thing basically this really works for us. If you add internal links to guest posts, which means that when you write a guest post for a blog, don't just insert a link pointing to your client's website. Make sure that you also add internal link pointing to the guest blog's internal pages. So make sure that there's uh, it's only add relevant post internal post. So it helps. You, it, it can increase the publish rate of your um, of your uh, guest blogging campaigns since, since you take away the burden from that guest blogger of finding internal links or finding internal pages that can uh, that are suitable for your guest post. Okay. Now let's go to the last, which is outreach. Now basically, what you want to do is to automate any contact finding. So you can use Email Hunter. It's a tool that can help you semi-automate contact finding. But if you want to manually do it, you can just look at contact pages and just, just see what pages are uh, available, whether it's in the About Me page. Sometimes for a on a resource page, you can see it in the, at the top or below section of the, of the resource page or the contact page itself or basically the author bio. So uh, what you need to do when manual search it is to find the most specific um, contact email, the, per, the, most, the most personalized co contact email of that blogger. So the thing with contact finding, I highly recommend to do it manually. Since with Email Hunter and, and, and others uh, automated tools, 
outreach automated tools, it uh, just give you a list of contact emails. And sometimes when one of your team will just get uh, one contact email, some may just some may just you uh, get the sales at domain.com, info at domain.com, and most of the time these are the emails that will, won't respond to you at all. So what you need to do is to find the hierarchy. First is the most um, uh, personalized, which means which means the name at domain.com. Okay, now when you want to try so semi-automated, you can use the buzz stream for that. So for email, pitch, and monitoring, if you want to also do manual, you can actually use Gmail as well. Now, when using Gmail, you can actually install the mail track that I o. This can actually help you track if the specific uh, uh, recipient of your pitch opens your email. So it has two checks. First check would give you, uh, would, would tell you if your email has been sent to a blogger or webmaster or, the, and the second check would tell you if a specific, um, if the if that recipient opens your email. Okay, now, um, you also need to validate email addresses. It's because most of the time you send an email address, you'll get an email just like this. So it's a failed message. In order for you to avoid this, you need to validate email addresses using my ad R. It's a tool. It's actually a cheap tool that can help you validate if there are emails, um, contact emails in your list that are valid. Uh, some might not be working, or some might are just failed. So it can actually help you avoid getting these responses. Okay. Uh, in terms of guest graphics, just what I shared earlier, you can actually just use this template. So, hi, my name, uh, hi, name, you're selling to this infographic URL. Let me know if you're happy to post it on your blog. I'd be willing, I'd be willing, I would be willing to customize a mini guest post for you. So, basically, just want to write an introduction on top of your infographic. This can actually help you increase that. Okay, also, you can update content with your sections, just like this response. He says that it's not a good fit for the audience. So basically, when I look at the resource page or their web, the resource page, there's a section for that that can, I, I can actually add more information with my content. And then when I reach, uh, and when I reach out to him again, then I can actually increase the chances of getting a link from that page. Okay, so you need to update your content with new sections that will fit in to another audience. Also, you need to include in your pitch, initial pitch, basically, a uh, correction or update instruction. So, basically, just want to send him an email um, saying that um, I noticed that you are uh, that you are updating your resource page and just uh, wanting to reach out to you if you're um, still uh, looking for more resources. So, simply those lines can actually help you increase your response and conversion rates. Another is you want to give replacement for broken. The most uh, the biggest mistake uh, link builders do when they do broken link building is they don't actually help people um, uh, give replacements. So basically when we do broken link building, once the uh, webmaster responded to us, is we, uh, we sent him an email uh, giving replacement to broken links. So whether or not it's um, just a, a removal of uh, www dot or whether you just need to add a uh, replacement for that specific page. So basically, you need to just look at um, uh, uh, if, the, if the link is still working and what you can do with those. And you need to uh, replace um, broken links with the correct links, not just provide them to the webmaster. With scheduling emails, basically, we schedule it. This is uh, GMT plus 8. In AST, it's around 11.48 a.m. So basically, these are the best times that we use uh, to, uh, to schedule our emails. Okay. Another thing that works for us is giving three options in follow-up emails. So basically, when we follow up emails, we just don't just send him, hey, um, we sent you an email last week. Would you mind looking at it? Or um, have you read that email? So we want them just to choose three options. So number one, uh, we want to know if they are not interested this time, basically they are busy or they have 
we had a vacation, especially in these days. Um, U.S. have their own, uh, uh, yeah, Americans have their own, uh, have their vacations. And second, I want to know if they are interested. So basically, uh, looking at their uh, time as well, and also if our content doesn't fit their page or website. So just giving these options and telling them which option um, uh, fit for their response can actually help us get get more insights, and then. Uh, looking at our resource page and then looking at our content and see what we can do to uh, reach out again to this specific blogger and get a link from this. Also, you can continue the conversation since most of the time, if you are following up, most of your initial pitches goes to the spam folder. You need to actually continue the conversation. Okay, so yeah. Now, work on the last part, which is actually um link building team so basically what are the roles that you need for you to scale the link building process link building strategies whether you're an SEO agency a marketer you need these four but it doesn't mean that you need to hire all of them number one so you need a link strategies in SEO agencies these are the SEO managers so uh, you don't need to hire someone to be a link, link, link strategist so basically it could, it could be your SEO manager then you also have, need to have a link prospector. And when you use automated tools like Citation Labs Link Prospector, then maybe your link strategist can also be your link prospector since you don't need to hire a full time worker to find to work on that. But in our team, most of uh, all of our operations, uh, team members in our operations are link prospectors. And some of them are outreach specialists as well, two or three of them. Are doing the outreach and content developer you don't need to hire in-house you can actually just outsource it to someone who's doing freelance work so you can uh, uh, remove those uh, time uh, that you just can just allot to some of your processes so basically in a link building team these are the four roles must have roles for you to scale a link building so basically you have the link prospecting, content, uh, link prospecting, qualification, content creation, and then the outreach. So if you want to know more resources, including resources, you can just visit my website looking for a specific tip. Uh, I just recently published 101 link building tips. So it tackles, it is a 1200, 12,000 word guide on the different tips on outreach, prospecting, content creation. Just take a look at that. And also, I just recently published a free guides on uh, link building. And there is one guide that can give you a uh, free 620 plus link opportunities and just need to uh, give your email and then you can have that database, which you can just, you can, which you can already use for your campaign. So if you want to download this slide presentation, you can actually go to that bit, that link, scalable, that link, that link building. And that ends my presentation. If you want to know more about our services, what we do, and also we'll be launching a course probably in the next few weeks. So tune in with that. So it's a course in white hat link building. It can give you the actual processes, spreadsheets that we use in, internally, and all of the processes, um, tactics that we use. Okay, so yeah, that's basically what we do. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, just feel free to comment or um, write in the chat box. So yeah, thank you for listening. Yeah, okay, if you can stop sharing the screen so we can see you. Uh, okay, guys, uh, you can uh, unmute your microphones, make comments, questions, uh, anything. I'll, I'll start with a, with a typical one. All everyone's saying is link building is dead. Uh, I had uh, Josh, uh, Josh Bajinsky here. I can hear my echo. It's somebody, somebody's microphone. I don't know who's. Uh, let's let's do this. Uh, we'll mute our microphones and unmute it only when when we in particular speak. So otherwise, it's, there's an echo. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, so uh, I have Josh Bajinsky, and he was basically saying 
links are very dangerous. Don't don't touch them. You obviously you don't think so. What would be your take on, take on it? How how you look at the link building nowadays? It's, it's changed. And I have Google here as well. He was uh, saying that links are still uh, one of the first three uh, uh, top ranking factors. So what what's your your opinion about uh, link building? Any comments? Yeah, sure. I'll jump in on this. I, I think I think the idea that that link building is dead is is very misguided. Um, what's what's maybe dead is link building as it existed in 2010 or 2011, pre pre Panda, pre Penguin. Um, I you know I, I think with the changes to the algorithm, what has really happened is is that the value of actually quality links, editorially reviewed links uh, that you know that, that take manual outreach and follow the, a lot of the processes that Benchito laid out, the value of those links is even greater than it was before because a lot of the manipulative stuff has been has been removed from the algorithm or is now being punished. But isn't link building became a bad word uh, as a synonym of, of what you just mentioned, manipulation? I think it has in some ways, but I think I think there's a lot of us, and maybe all of us in, in this webinar today are, are doing our best to, to fight that stigma against link building, kind of meaning the old school link building. And and you know today I think I think people are starting to to recognize that link building can be a uh, you know a white hat process, a process that's not manipulative and is actually adding value to the web and to web users as opposed to you know manipulating them. So basically, uh, what you're saying is a question of what do you mean by link building? If we mean li link building, what we meant, I don't know, five years ago, when we just go somewhere, buy it, or just put it in comments with, with link, this doesn't work and it's counterproductive. But uh, if you're talking about some kind of well, softy uh, and uh, ingenious uh, uh, approach, it, it works. Is, is, is this what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's been attempts to try to call it different things, whether that's link earning or just kind of lumping in with content marketing. But at the end of the day, I think link the, the link building, the tactics, and the term itself has evolved a lot. And I think more and more people in the SEO and online marketing industry are understanding that there's a right way to do link building, and link building doesn't necessarily mean the manipulative tactics of five, six years ago. Uh, guys, do, any comments? I'd like to think of it as link earning. Um, like, uh, it, it has a very different connotation to it, um, uh, and it uh, distances you from the whole link building thing, uh, which, uh, due to uh, everything that has happened over the last couple of years, um, has gotten kind of a negative vibe to it. Um, so I'm, Trying to uh, just um, use it, uh, call it link earning. Yeah, I, I, rem I remember it was uh, I think Mark Trapfagen trying to uh, use old anecdotes and saying we don't uh, build it, we earn them. Exactly. Uh, and is it is, is, is it's modern approach? Uh, Vincita, is it is it a modern is it a modern approach? Uh, just earn them. So you basically you produce a good stuff and you expect to have them. Or you still have to put a lot of efforts to to have these things. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically more on yeah, um, putting a lot of uh, effort into what you do. So it's first is identifying the value for what you're uh, what you're doing, whether so basically, what we do with our clients is we look at the the content that they have already on the site, and then also um, with regards to their networks, if they have a, a list of manufacturers, list of um, suppliers, that then we can actually use those networks, those relationships, in order for us to build links. So basically, looking at the value can uh, can help you initiate any link building campaigns, and then um, once you uh, have that value, then you can actually strategize um, with regards to the tactics, processes, tools, which I shared earlier. Do you, do you, do you were about to say something? Yeah, I was. I was going to say it's. You know, it. it you've got, people need to look at this. I think the main difference is from the 
link building of yesteryear, and and it still goes on, but was essentially I can have a pretty thin three or four page site that sells women's tops, and I can go and buy a couple of thousand links for women's tops, and I would start appearing. So. You know, the whole thing is, is even if you take the word link building out of it, essentially you're not going, you're not adding value to 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 the web or to your users with your four-page site with a couple of pictures of of a top, and and even in the real world you wouldn't. If your shop front had four pink tops <laughs> uh, on the high street, it's not going to attract anyone in. You know, people need to understand that the web has matured into a high street. You know, the buyers are savvy; they know what they're looking for. They can, they can, they can perceive quality. They can perceive customer service. And if you're not going to provide any of this on your site, obviously, because we're in a, in a, you know, your 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 marketing opportunities or your link building. Is is going to be non-existent in that sense, or you're going to have a really tough, tough time trying to sell it. Um, yeah, essentially, it's 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 marketing, and you need to have a decent product, or you need to have an offering on your site, and then you need to be able to take that offering you have, that quite you know, and then go to someone else and say, hey, you know, and th and that's where you start. You know, earning that marketing or that link building, you can't take a four-page, mm, you know, average kind of thing, and reach out and say, "Hey, I've got the best product in the world, and I'd love to do some work with you." And hey, check out my infographic, because at the end of the day, any publisher worth their salt is going to have a look at the link and go, "You've got to be kidding me." So. I yeah, yeah, but you, you, you kind of, you kind of, uh, uh, it's an extreme example. So you basically saying, okay, you, I, you have a shitty uh, site and you bought uh, um, tons of link, and and and, uh, and it still don't work. Okay, of course it do, it it won't work because well, you have nothing to sell and blah blah. blah. But just imagine you have a well, reasonable good site and. Your competitor has another reasonable good sign, and he doesn't buy. And you went and bought two thousand link, as you said. Uh, do you think it will work? Well, it depends who they bought from and who they hired to actually prospect for them. Uh, if you went to Fiverr, um, well, you know, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's, it's not gonna be a very profitable Christmas, shall we say? <laughs> uh, yeah, but, we, you we know that. But the unfortunate thing is, and, and Mark, the unfortunate thing is, yeah, is the years and years and years of the connotation around link building has stigmatized the industry, and we need to kind of, you know, I, I think we will win, you know, we will, like, SEO has been stigmatized, but you have your legitimate guys out there who, you know, Step up and try and educate people and, and users, and, and, and hopefully, people won't get caught going to Fiverr too often anymore. But they still do, and millions will still go and do it. But I think also part of the whole thing is, is uh, education. Okay. Uh, Craig, well, what's your take on that? I mean, I agree pretty much with. Uh, much of what all the other guys are saying there. I mean, link building from 2010, um, you know, where you just get put on every directory and every comment and, and all that kind of stuff is dead. That part is totally dead because Google are obviously out to, to you know, stop that from happening. But uh, you're, you're always going to have, you need good quality relevant links. And I think, you know, even Stephen said it's kind of link earning rather than seeking out links all the time. Um, for, for example, for the likes of myself, if I'm looking to earn some links, I would put out a guide or a tutorial or, or something like that, when, and people will link to that, and that very much works and, and is, isn't likely to die, um, because Google will um, you know, say it's got to be relevant and whatnot, and uh, as long as you're providing actionable 
tutorials or, or whatever it may be, uh, adding value, um, as Tim said, to the web, then you are likely to, you know, attract links and, and get links that way, as opposed to, you know, please put me on your resource page and, you know, there's 100,000 other guys on there. That kind of stuff is dead. Um, so that is uh, my take on it. So I agree pretty much with that, what everyone else is saying. Yeah, we have an uh, audience uh, uh, question, which says, uh, uh, "What will be your suggestion for not to do, uh, for not to go for link building?" I, I can read it. I guess. Uh, well, I, I don't know if it's the right place to ask everyone, uh, except, except probably Akshay, if he can hear us. Uh, kind of link building, link builder here. Akshay, are you with us? Not clear. Uh, okay. Yes, I am. Uh, okay, your, your camera is off for some reason. I don't know. You have, you have. Everyone were kind of pronouncing, but everyone. Okay, we, we Sorry, will I, speak. I, speak I dropped out for a sec. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, what's what's your? If you can switch your camera, would be even better. But uh, what's your uh, yeah. your take on a link build? Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, we we lost. Uh, but I guess it's connect. Uh, okay. He's back. Uh, uh, what's what's your actually uh, what's your take on link building? Obviously, I was asking if link building is dead. But I was asking people who are selling link building. Oh, in a way, in a way. Uh, uh, so you, I guess, you're not a link builder, are you? Uh, I'm not a link builder, but um, I don't think it's it's entirely dead. Uh, but at the same time, I don't. Uh, as, as long as links are genuine, I don't see a problem. With it, um, there's also a lot of emphasis on content marketing and, and just creating really good content, um, as opposed to link building. And um, one part of content marketing is also content distribution, which kind of ties in with with link building to some extent. Um, so as long as links are genuine, um, I don't think it's dead. Uh, it just takes a lot of time to actually build that relationship and see. Uh, you know, where's the win-win for for the person who's asking for the link and for the person who's giving the link uh, to come to a situation where it's a win-win. Um, so it has to add value uh, to the link giver's audience. Um, yeah, and I, I, I see it, it's still very much uh, a value add. Uh, I don't think it's entirely dead. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. Uh, well, I was a uh, uh, well, well, was it only my question? Uh, actually, we uh, um, uh, a month ago, yeah, it was a month ago, fifth uh, of July, we had Aaron, Aaron Fishkin uh, uh, represent most obviously. We had uh, Dixon uh, uh, Jones representing Majestic SEO, uh, and uh, we had uh, HRFs uh, here. Uh, Tim Soul and the uh, host was Eric Enge. He asked uh, them a provocative question, asking what would you choose, 5,000 just links or five absolutely great links, I don't know, from Wall Street Journal Financial or something like that. Can I ask uh, everyone uh, the same question, unless unless you want to say something something particular else. Uh, Vincita, what would be what would be your choice? 5,000 just links or five absolutely great and, I don't know, heavy Heavy weight. Yeah, um, of course, five thousand. <laughs> okay, so so you go you go against against uh, Rand Fishkin and against HRFs. Yeah, okay. I, okay. I often I often use this analogy uh, quite a lot when someone asks me. Because it also, we, I know we haven't gone into this yet between no follow and follow, um, but it always comes up in these kind of things. And my analogy that I use is, if I happen to get um, an article written in Forbes or the Times or depending on what niche you're in, and I happen to get an article written there, which included a no follow link to my site uh, that generated me. Um, you know, 50,000 50, visits over, you know, the weekend, if it was published on the weekend, and I made, you know, 3,000 sales out of those 50,000 visits, as opposed to, to having another couple of hundred crappy little blog links here or there, what would I take? I'd take my force, because what am I doing at the end of the day? I'm, 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 I'm selling. 
<laughs> so, you know, the thing is, you also you need, you, you need to put things into context, um, and you need to understand what your goals are at the end of the day. Yeah, okay. Uh, I couldn't agree with you. Um, I would go for the five top links uh, any day of the week. Um, I've gotten a couple of links from uh, Bloomberg, for instance, and well, that worked magic. Um, I've seen the power of, of those kind of links, um, and well, of course it helps to know what you're going to get, five versus the 5,000 one, um, but uh, I would definitely go over quality over quantity. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, could you say it again? I would, I would also go for quality. Um, I would go for the five links over the 5,000. I think there's a misconception out there that people think that they have to get thousands of links. Um, and all, you know, more links uh, is always good, but I think the quality over quantity uh, has to come out on top. Okay. Let's go to the next guest. What would be your, your take on it? Yeah, I would I would go for five links over five thousand. You know, I mean, it, there's a lot of gray area in between there, but um, you know, let let us suppose that in the short term, just getting five thousand really quick links could maybe you know boost your ranking short term more than just five quality links. But I think I think the lasting value. Um, you know, of, of really high quality links, that value stays there, and you're going to you're not just going to see the ranking improvements that, that, that will then be volatile. It's 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 going to be it's going to be there for good, and, and and plus, really quality links also have value beyond just just the SEO or ranking purposes. Uh, like one of the guests mentioned, there could be direct click through traffic, but it also is helping brand visibility and, and sending sending other relevant signals. I'd always go for. I'd, I'd much rather have a very small amount of really really great links than hundreds and hundreds or thousands of, of kind of links that don't really add any value to the web. Okay, actually, I I can see your answer. You 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 right. If you probably cannot see it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I think I'll just uh, reaffirm what everyone says and, and go with quality over quantity. Um, so yeah, that, that's uh, that's definitely the way to go for 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 what I would. That's my guesstimate. I'm not a link building guy, but that's my that's my gesture. Okay, okay, Vinchita, you you uh, you're a minority, but obviously I have was a provocative question. Obviously, uh, it depends five thousand what kind of links five what no no it's not not you're not going anywhere not yet yeah well no no, no you're not going yeah no you yeah I was saying you're a minority and it was a provocative question about five thousand what and five what it's like a ask what do you prefer five banknotes or five thousand coins. Well, depends on the coins and banknotes, isn't it? Uh, I, I don't know, guys. Uh, we we've been here for one hour. Would you uh, want a quick, quick question? Uh, team, uh, touch it about do follow and not follow. Does it matter? How much does it matter? But very quick, if you if you can, starting with Vinchita. Vinchita, what about your take on do follow links and not follow? Does it really matter if somebody puts no follow link? Okay, you actually need to have a diverse um, link profile. When I say link diversity, you need to get uh, links that are no follow. You need to get links also to follow. Since um, let's say you're you have a website and you only get do follow links, it's an unnatural for a um, website to have that kind of link profile. So basically, what you need to do is to diverse your tactics so you can do guest blogging, broken link building, and other strategies, and then get a diverse you no know, follow, do follow. So yeah, there's no versus with that. Do follow versus no follow. You need both actually. Actually, I know you have to leave. Yeah, very quick. Do follow, uh, no follow. Um. So sorry, I missed the question. All links? Yeah, okay. Do follow links and no follow links. Does it does it make any difference from your point? Do follow? I'm actually. Yes. 
Um, so I'm actually not aware of the difference between do follow and 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 follow links. So um, okay. I don't think I'm qualified to comment on that. Yeah, neither neither do I. Okay, Akshay has to leave. Thank you very much for yeah. for coming. Okay, uh, uh, okay, thank you, boy and boy. Uh, a team, uh, you you definitely qualify to to uh, your opinion. Do follow and not follow. You started this question. <laughs> Look, obviously, I prefer. Uh, uh, you know, I prefer a, a normal followable link without the the, the no follow attribute. I, I, naturally, I'd prefer that. Um, but hey, let me throw something into the mix here. Uh, some of my hotel clients, we obviously actively pursue uh, a lot of the Sunday uh, papers, and they don't even link to you. There's not even a physical link except for the name. And even with just your name mentioned, you're looking at uh, an attributable an attribute beautiful source, uh, which even shows up in Webmaster Tools, and, hey, traffic and sales. So even a, a link that isn't even physically linked is is great, you know, if it's in the right place. Yeah, not only uh, not follow, but even no links just mentioned will will do well, that's to some extent. Uh, Steven? Well, um, of course, there's a different uh, difference between do follow links and no follow links, uh, but I'll never turn down a good no follow link um, because of the idea that the the ranking power um, that it contains would be um, uh, a lot less. I mean, I'm also thinking in terms of traffic uh, and 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 other spin off that that comes of it. I mean, uh, a lot of the Wikipedia links are no follow. Um, but does that mean we shouldn't go for them uh, if it's relevant uh, and if it adds value to the Wikipedia articles? Of course, I'm yeah. not advocating for trashing Wikipedia, but if you can add value, then, then why not? But do follow and no follow is SEO stuff. It's not that clickable or not clickable, isn't it? It's, 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 it's only for uh, Google robots, uh, isn't it? Is, is what we're talking about. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it, and other search engines, of course. Um, yeah, uh, sure. But I mean, uh, if I had to choose between one another, I would just focus on where the link comes from, not um, looking at the link property, so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, Craig, what's what's your take on no follow, no follow? Yeah, I, I mean, I can reiterate pretty much what, what Tim was saying um, that you know, if I had to pick, then I, I do follow link, obviously, be a no follow link. Is, a no follow link is a link that Google are not going to follow or not really give you any credit for. However, as uh, Vincito says, that would look unnatural because everyone's backlink profile has to have, you know, whatever someone will have no follow links. Um, so I would discount it and also do look at the link in terms of what I would want to gain from it. You can obviously get traffic from, you know, if you're on the forums or whatever, um, and the traffic will come from that link, even though it's no follow. And valuable. So, um, from an SEO point of view, what brings power? I do follow link is the one that you have to go for um, if you're, you're asking the question like that. But you know, obviously, everyone has to have you no know, follow links, and, and there's other reasons um, you, know, you might get traffic from, from a website. Do follow an SEO. Link. Kodim, uh, 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 what's your what's your? Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with what everyone is saying. Uh, the, the one thing that I'll add to the mix is that I think websites that by default no follow almost all their links that can kind of be a sign of a of, of a site that maybe you don't want to be on. Whether that's because it's kind of a, a like a direct submit directory kind of thing. Um, or, or it's a blog or a news site that is not exercising any editorial control on the, on the site, so they're just blanket no following all those links. When we're prospecting and we see a site that just, as a rule, is no following everything, that's, that's a sign that maybe it's not a, a site worth targeting and probably doesn't have a real active audience. Now, if, 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 a web, if a webmaster decides to selectively place a no follow link on a, on a link that we build and it's a good site and there's people going to be reading it, then, then there's probably still value there, but uh, I, I don't like sites that just make it a, a blanket policy to no follow all their external links. I think they're I think sites that do that are hurting the web, not helping. 
Uh, I, uh, you will be surprised how many webmasters I've seen, they believe, they really believe, I don't know the answer, but they do believe that uh, when they use do follow link at taking uh, what power of SEO from their web page to page the link to. Uh, and it's, for me it sounds kind of strange, but I'm not an SEO. Is it, is it true or is it just complete, complete rubbish? I think it's complete gibberish. I think there's. I think it maybe once was true, or that you you want to try to sculpt your page rank by by you know not having external links or no following some of those external links. If you're if you're getting involved in that kind of garbage, you're 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 trying to manipulate the the, the algorithm, and you're not trying to add value to the web. And and so whether there's a little bit of truth to it somewhere in the algorithm, still I would not worry about that and I wouldn't be focused on trying to manipulate the algorithm with different kind of tags or, or playing playing loose with your external links. I will say that there have been studies that show that externally externally linking from your site to other authoritative sites has a positive, not negative SEO uh, benefit. Yeah, that's that's what I hear. Uh, okay, guys, we were kind of passing uh, passing one one hour mark. Uh, if if any of you have more comments or questions or anything, I'll just check if we do have more questions from public. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I don't think we have more questions from public. So, do if you have something, something else, or questions or comments. Go on. If not, okay, we have to say thank you very much, Vinchita, for for your presentation today or tonight. Obviously, you you're going into why well, next day already in 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 Philippines. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for being with us, team team Copper uh, from England, uh, Steven Steven from Fessum uh, from uh, from Holland. We have uh, Craig. Uh, Campbell from Scotland, United Kingdom, and we have Cody Cahill uh, from Page One Power, Page One Power uh, from United States. Okay, you guys, uh, we we're going off air. So what you, you can do, you can say, "Hi, hi, mom, I'm I'm on a tele. <laughs> <laughs>